Um, so let me just invite you to get comfortable. Uh, I just have a couple of very quick thoughts tonight. Uh, today is June 11. So it is the feast day of St. Barnabas. And I bet you, you can each tell me about five facts about St. Barnabas, right? Anybody know any? He's a man. What's that? He's a man. He's a man. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Let's go. He was a All good, right, so. All right, so he was a good man if facts. he was a saint. So, so we know he's a, he's a what? He's a saint, which means. Yeah, I, he must have been pretty good if he's a saint. He's pretty good. good. <laughs> okay, all right, there you go. Um, and in fact, the kind of follow up what Dave was saying about, um, about giving, it's one of the first things we actually note about Barnabas. Uh, if you look in Acts chapter four, this is what it says. Uh, it says there was a, a Levite, a uh, native of Cyprus, Joseph to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which also means son of encouragement. Well, hold on to that, son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him and then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So he was the, the, the first tither, right? You, you gotta, it, it's a really good stewardship story, isn't it? Um, that's the first thing that we remember about um, Barnabas. But he actually traveled a lot with uh, Paul. In fact, it's Barnabas who introduces Paul you remember his name was Saul before, and he had that experience on the road to Damascus, and he became blind, and he has this experience where he believes that he's actually encountered the risen Christ. And so he goes from being a persecutor of the church to being one of the biggest advocates for the church and ends up going on these missionary journeys. But before he does that, it's Barnabas who actually brings Paul back to Jerusalem, and it introduces him to the church there that's at this point being headed by Peter. And you can only imagine how skeptical they would have been uh, to have Barnabas show up with this guy, who before that had actually been partly responsible for the stoning of Stephen. But remember what his name is. His name means son of encouragement. And I can only imagine at that time of strife, when people are not trusting the motives of one another, that he was indeed a son of encouragement, encouraging Paul to go ahead and go and meet these people that he had once persecuted, um, to be able to be a part of a movement uh, to be able to talk to, to Peter and James and the rest of the church in Jerusalem, and to be able to see that this once persecutor of the church could actually be the greatest advocate who had spread our faith all over. In fact, it's Paul and Barnabas who bring the church to Antioch. And it's in Antioch that the first followers of the way end up being called Christians. And so if it wasn't for Barnabas, the son of encouragement, I, I imagine that Paul would have never been introduced to Peter. And if Paul had never met Peter, that Paul would have never gone to Antioch. And perhaps we'd still be followers of the way, but I imagine we'd be maybe called by a different name. So my invitation for you tonight, particularly in this time when there's suspicion about the other, when there's a lot of animosity between peoples, that we could be Barnabases, that we could be sons and daughters of encouragement to bring healing and wholeness and reconciliation to this world that desperately, I think, needs to know what it means to love and to be a Christian. Amen.
The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Son and Spirit equally, as from the first it was, is now, and evermore shall be. Let God arise and strike his foes, let those who hate him flee. Let them like smoke with windows off all that. For God let the wicked melt as wax does in the flame. But let the righteous all be glad and offer God a claim. Sing praise to God, exalt his name, who rides the clouds on high. The Lord dwells in he hears the widow's cry. God brings a solitary home and breaks the prisoner's bonds. But rebels who reject the Lord shall live in arid land. Lord, when you let your people forth, earth shook, the dark skies poured. Before the presence of the God of Sinai, Israel's Lord. The gracious rain you sent, O oh God, renewed the weary land. Your people found a home, the poor were strengthened by your hand. God gave the word, a company of women made it known. Women divide the spoils of kings and armies overthrown. Although you waited with the sheep, shall be like a dove, with feathers of a pure as gold, and silver wings above. God scattered kings like falling snow on Zalman's lofty crown. Almighty Bashan, why are you so envious looking down? This is a hill where God will dwell, on which he chose to rest. With twenty thousand chariots, he comes in holiness. God has gone up and captive, he has led captivity. They give you gifts that you will live with them your enemy. Bless God each day for burdens born, for saving help made known. He 
is our Savior God, through whom death's power is overthrown. Give glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit equally, as from the first it was, is now, and those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Venetia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists, also proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turn to the Lord. A news of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord, then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year, they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. And one of them named Agabus stood up predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world. And this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. Thanks. Hallelujah. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will say. The stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. wept for love of them, I turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom 
shall I stand? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your And the poor and lame, I will set a feast for them. My hand will say, Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Grant, O oh God, that we may follow the example of your faithful servant Barnabas, who seeking not his own renown, but the well-being of your church, gave generously of his life and substance for the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, the hours of both of day and night are yours, and to you the darkness is no threat. Be present, we pray, with those who labor in these hours of night, especially those who watch and work on behalf of others. Grant them diligence in their watching, faithfulness in their service, courage in danger, and confidence in emergencies. Help them to meet the needs of others with confidence and compassion. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I won't fret and I won't worry. Instead, I'll hurry to pray. I'll turn my problems to petitions and lift my hands in praise. I'll say goodbye to all my fears. His presence sets me free. Although I may not understand, I feel God's peace in me. For our family members and our friends, 
for the 33 Marylanders from Tuesday to Wednesday and for the 31 Marylanders from Wednesday to this evening who have passed on to larger life. Father of all mercies, you are the God of all comfort. Console all those that are suffering the death of a loved one. Become their strength in this time of loss, their hope in this time of bereavement, their joy in this time of sorrow, and their perfect peace in the turmoil that their hearts must be facing. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servants, Ed, and Pat, and Zelly, and for those who have died in this state in the last two days. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, sheep of your own fold, lamb of your own flock, sinners of your own redeeming. Receive them into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who grieve, with those who cry, with those who work and watch, weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted and shield the joyous and all for your love's sake. Amen. Guide us in our waking, Lord. Guard us in our sleeping, that waking we may watch with Christ and sleep. servant free to go in peace as you declare these eyes of mine at last have seen the Savior whom you have prepared a light which will enlighten all and Israel's glory equally all glory to the Father, Son and Spirit Evermore shall be. Guide us in our waking, Lord, and guard us in our sleeping, that waking we may watch with Christ, and sleeping may we rest in Alleluia, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And now the sons and daughters of the source of encouragement. May you find encouragement this night. And may you speak and act and bring words of encouragement to this world. And may you know that you have God's blessing this night and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.